Hey you guys, hoping all is well with everybody. In this video, we're going to be continuing the read-along of The Secret Zoo by Brian Chick. And the last time we left off, we ended with Chapter 2, so today we're going to be continuing with Chapter 3. And as always, I'll be showing you any pictures we come across, but as always, please feel free to follow along. Let's get started with Chapter 3. Chapter 3, A Tale of Wonder. The school bell rang, and Noah raced for the door, not bothering to slow down when Mrs. Bluss called, Kids, walk! Noah didn't have time for walking. He only had three hours before his parents would be home, so he needed to move fast. Since Megan's disappearance, Noah's parents had been working late, leading a search campaign out of a friend's office in downtown Clarksville. Considering all that his parents had been through with Megan, They'd originally had concerns about Noah's walking home from school and being by himself at the house. They finally decided to allow it, as long as Noah promised to walk home with his friends. And rather than being home by himself, Noah always stayed at Richie's until his parents picked him up after leaving the search headquarters for the day. Today, however, Noah needed to break the rules. In the hallway, he tossed his books into his locker scanned the crowd to make sure Ella and Richie couldn't see him, and then squirmed his way to the main exit. Outside, he ran across the schoolyard, kicking up gravel and dust. He hadn't slept since the bird's strange visit the previous night. He still couldn't make sense of what had happened. Did it mean something? Or had a bird simply flown through his window and dropped a piece of trash in his room? Whatever it might be, there'd be no harm in paying Mr. Tall Tale a visit. He walked down the drive, turned into Jenkins Street, and walked alongside the concrete wall of the zoo. After rounding the corner under Walker's Boulevard, he reached the zoo and bolted for the entrance, where he had flashed his membership card to a startled attendant and crashed through the turnstile. Because the day was so cold, the zoo was nearly empty. Noah stormed across the pavement, weaving in and out of the exhibits. He'd been to the zoo so many times that he knew the shortest path to the Langer house without thinking about it. When he reached the small, ivy-draped building, he pushed through the entrance, turned a corner, and nearly crashed into a small group of people. The exhibit had no traditional bars or concrete walls. An enormous dome-shaped net kept the Langers inside. There, they relaxed on trees, looking bored. Their tails were so long that Noah wondered how the animals managed to keep them from becoming knotted in the branches. Mr. Talltail had the longest tail of all. As the monkey rested on the high branch, his tail dangled below his rear end like a furry snake. Now that Noah was inside the exhibit, he felt a bit foolish. What did he expect to see? The visitors gradually wandered off, and the building fell silent. The langurs turned their eyes toward Noah occasionally, but they showed little interest in him. Psst! Noah said, Mr. Talltail. The monkey ignored him. He was more interested in the large leaf that was trapped in the ceiling of the net. Mr. Talltail, can you hear me? The monkey picked a closer leaf, popped it in his mouth, and chewed casually. Um, okay, Noah muttered, scratching his head. Why am I talking to a monkey? The entrance door swung open and a security guard stepped inside. He had a thatch of fire engine red hair and plump lips, and his face and arms were covered in freckles. Hello, Noah said, feeling stupid and embarrassed. After all, this man had clearly caught him talking to a monkey. The guard didn't answer, and an awkward silence filled the air. He strolled past Noah, observing him skeptically. Noah stared at the langurs, pretending that he was enjoying himself. The sound of the guard's footsteps softened as he rounded the exhibit. Finally, Noah heard the exit door open and close. He was alone again with the langurs. Talk about creepy, Noah mumbled. He glanced at Mr. Talltail once more and said, Nothing to show me, huh? Mr. Talltail stared into space and idly chewed his leaf working his jaw from side to side. Feeling like an idiot, Noah decided to leave and turn toward the exit. At the moment, something fell on his shoulder, and in a reflex reaction, Noah swatted his back. 
He swung around and yelped. A long, black, furry thing slithered across his forearm. It jumped off and floated in the air. Then Noah realized what it was. Mr. Talltail's tail. Seeing Noah turn to leave, the langer had leaped to the front of the net, deliberately poked out his tail, and brushed it over Noah's shoulder. What's more, a slip of paper was wrapped in the tip. Noah knew it was crazy, but Mr. Talltail was hand handing him the paper. The monkey waved his tail as to say, Are you going to take this or what? Noah crept forward. He reached out his trembling arm and snatched the paper. What is this? he said. Mr. Talltail leaped back up to the trees and relaxed in his previous spot in the branches. He picked another leaf and chewed. His dark eyes gazed blankly into the distance as if nothing had happened. For a second, Noah thought he had imagined the whole incident, but the paper was in his hand, crumpled, rippled, ripped, and spotted. A few langer hairs even clung to it. Noah opened it carefully. The moment he saw the message inside, he thought he'd faint. The front door creaked open again, and he thrust the paper into his pocket. For the second time, the red-headed security guard walked in. He eyed Noah suspiciously, and as he approached, his heels angrily smacked the floor. What Noah had read on the paper was making his stomach roll and his head ache. You okay, kid? You ain't looking too hot. The guard said, Yeah, fine. Noah was anything but fine. He could barely breathe. I gotta go, he managed to say. He hurried for the door, slammed through it, and burst into the cool air. Have a nice day, the guard called out. The door crashed as it closed. Gasping, Noah leaned against a wall. He pulled out the paper and looked at it again. It was red with purple lines and blue stars in the corners. He'd seen it before. Deep breaths, he told himself. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But even as he repeated the words, he didn't believe them for a second. Chapter 4. A Mysterious Clue to a Mysterious Zoo Noah sat on a bench in a quiet part of the zoo. He glanced over both shoulders to make sure nobody was around and pulled Mr. Talltail's paper out of his pocket. Neat cursive handwriting covered every inch. All letters were joined by smooth arts, and the dots on the eyes were carefully placed. Though the ink were faded and smeared, he knew the penmanship. It was Megan's. There was no mistaking it. No glanced around again. Still, no one was nearby. A wind swept across the zoo. Noah took a deep breath, gathered his courage, and read the page. It started in the middle of, the, of a sentence. Keep seeing birds in the forest of flight exhibit that aren't supposed to be there. A bird chart near the entrance has a complete list of birds, but a few that I see aren't even on it. Then, every few days, some of those birds aren't even around anymore. On top of that, an old lady who works there keeps following me around, asking me what I'm doing. She's creepy. The bottom of the page was missing. Noah flipped it over. The writing at the top was too smeared to read. The words he could decipher began in the middle of a sentence and the middle of a new thought. Can't write it down without feeling stupid, but I know what I saw. There's a wall with holes in it. I think the holes are supposed to give the birds a private place to build their nests. They're supposed to be like cracks and crannies and rocks and mountains and stuff. I got curious. I found a bench near the wall and sat there a while, pretending to read a pamphlet. After an hour or so, I saw something. There was a bunch... The page was torn. Noah flipped the page over repeatedly hoping to find something in the margins. He dropped against the back of the bench and stared into space. What's going on? What did all this mean? Why didn't Megan been making trips to the zoo without informing the family? And how did the Langer got hold of a page from her diary? Noah's first instinct was to tell somebody, an adult at the zoo, 
but Megan had been suspicious of the zoo worker, and hadn't he just had a strange encounter with a security guard? What did all of this mean? The leaves fell around him like colorful snowflakes. He was stunned and confused. I don't get it, he muttered. I don't get it at all. But one thing Noah didn't understand was that he had to act, and he had to act quickly. In two hours, the zoo would close. That would be more than enough time to take a tour of the forest of flight and perhaps to examine the wall with the unusual crannies and holes. And that is the end of chapter four, and we'll end the video there. But I hope to see you guys in the next video where we continue with chapter five. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys take good care of yourselves, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks.